Hey team, Chris here. Hey, just thought I'd jump on Facebook Live real quick on a Monday night to talk to you guys about eight health and fitness myths that need to die. So these are so common and I hear them over and over. I thought I'd just do this one video so that I can refer my clients back to it all the time and I never have to repeat myself over and over and over again. So the first um, health and fitness and weight loss myth that needs to die is that ab crunches or planks or any tummy exercises um, will make your tummy smaller and sort of firm, uh, well firm is the wrong, will make your tummy smaller. So ab crunches make your tummy smaller is basically a myth and I'm going to explain it by using batteries and a quilt. Now I can't get the, I can't change the camera around but imagine these are the muscles in my abs. I'm using batteries because muscles actually use up energy so it's kind of that good visual and they're hard and they're firm so those muscles are underneath my skin and um, imagine them in my abs. We have muscles obviously everywhere and they help us do stuff and get strong and and pick up things and 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 make us firmer because they're nice and hard. So those are my abdominal muscles. And then this quilt is the layer of body fat that goes over the muscles under that under the skin. So when we are doing these crunches and these res, what we call resistance exercises, so crunches, plank, weights, body weight stuff, what we are mainly primarily working on is the muscles underneath. We're strengthening these, we're making them firmer, we're improving them. And this is really a good thing. We don't need to go overboard with it, especially with abdominal um, exercises. Three to five minutes of effective ab exercises every second day is perfect. And then just lock your abs on most of the day or even when you're doing other exercises. So that's enough. But we're working these hard muscles that go underneath the layer. This layer gets reduced from um, burning up more calories than we use each day. So the way to burn up more calories is to move more and to huff and puff more and um, just be off your butt more basically and also exercise. Um, and also the way to um, consume less calories, which is the most important factor for the size of your tummy, is to look at your eating plan. So let's get that myth to die. Ab crunches don't have too much of an impact on the body fat that's around on top of these muscles. But it's still a good thing to do them and to strengthen them, but don't count on it to get rid of the, the fluffy layer over the top. Number two, small regular meals boost your metabolism. No, it's been proven time and time again that it's the amount of calories you eat each day. So if you eat 2,000 calories per day and you split it up into three large meals, or if you eat 2,000 calories per day and you split it up to six small meals, it's the same. So just do whatever works best for you and your lifestyle and your hunger patterns and that keeps you full and that works for you. And don't stress too much about the timing. The total amount is what's important. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, is that certain forms of exercise lengthens your muscles. So I often hear this with ballet and yoga and using really small weights over and over, um, that kind of thing will lengthen your muscles. But our muscles attach, our muscles are there to move a bone. So our muscles attach at a bone here and a bone here. They can't lengthen, unless we lengthen the bone, that length is set in place. So no certain exercises are going to, to lengthen a muscle. That's set in place. So just do any resistance exercises that you enjoy and that use and overload all of your muscles in the least, in the way with the least effort. So if you're gonna use light weights to overload your muscles, you're gonna be there for a long time doing those light weights. If you're going to use heavy weights, you can shorten the amount of time and still work and overload those muscles. So let's bust that myth. You can't lengthen those the, the muscles. Um, number one, two, three, four is exercising at a low to medium intensity burns more body fat. This myth is busted. Um, more intensity always equals more 
calories burnt. It doesn't really matter if it's coming from body fat or carbohydrates or whatever because if you don't burn up the carbohydrates, they're gonna to turn to body fat anyway if they're in excess. So let's just get more intensity equals more results. Doesn't mean you have to kill yourself, but just get rid of that that worry of, oh my God, what intensity should I stay at? Just give it your all in your exercise session and it's gonna make you feel confident, feel badass, and increase your fitness and do all those kinds of things anyway. So just to give it your all. Okay, next myth that needs to die. I've just got notes down here, that's why I'm looking down. That exercise alert alone works for weight loss. It can do, when we're talking fat loss, I'm again talking about this layer of fat that's over our, our skeletal system and over our muscles. Um, we need to be in deficit 7,000 calories to burn up one kilo of weight. Now, if I was to rely on exercise alone, someone my size might burn up an extra, I don't know, four to 500 calories for an, an hour exercise session. So if I was going to rely on exercise alone, I need, I don't know, what's that? 14 plus hours of exercise to burn one kilo of this excess body fat. And that is assuming I haven't eaten any more in order to, you know, reward or compensate myself for my hard exercise session. So exercise plus um, a great nutrition plan is always the way to, to work on um, reducing any excess body fat. Um, the other one which sort of goes with, with the, um, the small regular meals is that you can't eat carbs at night or carbs, eating carbs at night will automatically turn to fat or you know make it harder or whatever. Your body is more like a bank account where everything in counts and everything out counts and the timing is what we call a small tiny rock. Um, it has very little weight, it has very little significance in the long run. It's more just about the amount in and the amount out. Also the quality matters so you know what types of food you're eating but the timing is a really small insignificant Thing. But this is a good thing for you guys to know because you can now work to your natural preferences and your natural hunger levels without following these crazy rules that don't really make any difference anyway. Okay, number seven is eating X food, insert your favorite treat, will make you fat. So let's say sugar because sugar is on the big victim list at the moment. Eating sugar makes you fat. Well, it can do if that leads you to eating more calories than you burn up each day, but it doesn't have to. If you, if you can include sugar or fat or chips or whatever in your plan and you still stay within your calorie limit, um, whilst getting enough protein and fat and fiber and all of that kind of thing, so it, it will need to be minimalized. You can't live off you know, chocolate cake, obviously, but just eating that food won't directly turn into body fat or anything like that. It's how the whole plan integrates together. So just blaming one food or one macronutrient is simplifying things too much. It's how the whole plan works itself out together. Okay, so let's take that sugar is um, vilified or carbs are the devil or whatever it is. Let's take that off the table and we look at how the whole plan fits in. Um, another one that I hear is sweat equals fat loss or sweat is fat crying or you know pain is fat leaving the body and all this kind of thing no fat loss happens when we burn up more calories than we put in each day um, some of us genetically sweat more than others uh, it might be a hot day outside you're sweating um, it doesn't really have too much to it can do if you're really putting in a hard exercise session then you're sweating more then you're burning up more calories but it doesn't it's not the be all and end all measurement so sweat is fat crying it's like garbage or fat leaving the body or whatever it might be okay are there my eight health fitness and weight loss myths that need to die if you have any comments questions queries suggestions please pop them in the comments link below i will check back on the replay and answer any questions that you might have if you would like help with all of your health, fitness and fat loss goals, please um, comment below also. I've got a coaching program running starting today, so it's not too late to join that one. 
um, but also just private message me if you wanted to do that and I can help you out any way that um, any way that I might be able to okay team have a nice night it's almost my dinner time um, let me know what you're having for dinner pop in the comments below what you're having for dinner and I will talk to you soon bye